buddleia has finally started to flower. So I'm really hoping to see some butterflies in the garden soon. We all have different tastes in cut flowers and it's very easy, particularly in the beginning, just to copy what other people have grown. And I'm definitely trying some new things this year because I've seen other people grow them and I got carried away when I was doing my seed shopping. However, I haven't perhaps had as much success with some of them as I would have liked. And likewise, there are things that I decided not to grow because I didn't have the space or because the slugs ate them. I really miss and definitely will have a place back in the cut flower patch again next year. So come with me now and we'll go and see which things have been successful for me and which things perhaps not so much. In America there are lots of growers who grow marigolds and I thought it would be a really good choice as a focal flower that I could perhaps use for that gap before dahlias and after roses. Um, They're the right shape, but I just can't seem to get the stem length. Even if I were to cut really deep down into the plant, it still wouldn't give me the length of stem that I would need for one of my classic bunches. Not only that, I'm not that keen on the flower. Um, so I've grown a mix of sort of oranges and yellows. And I mean, maybe actually in a mixed bouquet, it would look better um, because I suppose it is a bit chrysanthemum-like almost, but it just really just isn't the length of stem. And even the white, well, supposed white one that I was growing, which is Kilimanjaro, is, um, this one's really spent, but it's, it's not white, it's a really pale yellow. Um, so will I be giving over this much space to marigolds next year? Um, that'll be a no. Um, it may be that just in my zone, 8B, it's just not hot enough. And we have been having a really strange summer as it is. Um, and maybe they just need the heat to put that extra length of stem on. So another flower I've been growing for the first time is the cyanoglossum. And I opted to grow the pink. Now you can see you get an exceptionally good stem length on here. It's very pretty, but it's not great to condition. Some stems will condition really well and hold up really well, and others cut and condition in exactly the same way, respond very different, differently and can be quite droopy. I have found that is quite a good stage to cut them almost when some of the lower flowers have started to go to seed. But I do a lot of retail work and having tried these in a vase in my own house, they shed quite a lot. And lots of my customers prefer tidy flowers in their house. It's a bit like Ami, it's a great event flower, but do they want the Ami shedding all over their kitchen table? So. I really want to like this one because it's a great um, one for overwintering as well. And it would have been one that would have done really well in the polytunnel for early in the spring. And I mean, maybe I will use it for that hole. But for now, I'm finding I've got all of this here and I'm not cutting it. So I've got a whole bed here and I'm just not using it. Um, therefore, it's a bit of a waste of space. Um, have you grown Cyanoglossum? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Is it worthy of a space in your cut flower patch? I'd love to know, but for me, you can't dry it, so, or can you? I don't think you can, maybe I should try, but for me, I probably won't grow this one again. Something else I've been growing for the first time is Gadesha, and although it's not been going terribly well for me, I am gonna grow it again because I know it's through my growing errors. And that's because the two plants which I planted out and got in the ground were brilliant cuts, really good stem lengths. 
whereas the ones that I've been nursing on are a bit slow behind. But if you look, these are the ones in the tunnel. I've got some outside as well. You can see we have now got some usable lengths and the, these ones are not quite so usable, but they're just starting to flower. And it's a, again, for retail, it's a really nice, bright, useful colour. Um, so I'm hoping to improve my growing of Fadisha, but I will definitely give that space in the cut flower patch again next season. The Argeratum floss flower, the jewellery is still out on this. So I, I'm still learning when is the right time to cut it and how to condition it. But when I've got it right, I've really liked it in a bouquet and the stem length is now usable. So I think this is just one I need to get to grips with, but I probably would grow it again. Um, but our, the jury's still out. We're going to have to decide about this one a little bit later in the season because I've only just started cutting and using it. But they're not all losers. I have grown some things for the first time this year, which I will grow again. And one of them is these crown daisies, um, which come as sort of this yellow, and then they also come with um, sort of a pale yellow and a darker yellow center. The stem length is exceptional, and it's just giving me such a good crop of flowers. And I always think a little pop of yellow um, really makes every bouquet just, especially retail bouquets, people like um, bright colours, they don't like things to be too muted and sort of wedding-y. Um, so that's a winner for me and that's a crown daisy and it was so easy from seed as well. So definitely we'll give that one a go again next season. Another success story and something I'll be growing again is the gilia. Um, the only thing I need to do differently is I need to stake it because the stem length would be plenty long enough and I have been able to use it in the bouquets but it will sort of flop over the edges it would look brilliant in pots and containers actually um, a sort of, or even in a cottage garden cascading over the edge of the borders but I love the colour and I'd like it for cutting so I'm going to, definitely going to grow it again and I'm going to stake it and another success story is the, the bascom and I was really concerned when I was going to grow this because we have a million moth caterpillars in the cottage garden which love the buddleia and I used to have a different type of a bascom in the garden and they used to love that too but as of yet the bascom I'm growing in the cut flower patch have been I should touch some wood really <laughs> have been caterpillar free and the colors I've had in in the selection from the happy green shop are just beautiful colors i mean just look at this um antique pinky purple it's just beautiful um incidentally though i've tested this um and it, it wouldn't do very well in a bridal bouquet because it would need a water source um but for actual flowers that are going to be arrangements in water you just love that color and here we've got another real winner. And this is the rat's tail status pink pokers. And obviously, you know, I'm a fan of things you can dry. So that's an added bonus for it. But I'm loving this in all sorts of floral work, in classic bunches, um, I mean, um, buttonholes. Um, it's just really fantastic. And I wonder if, you know, I possibly would rather have more of this than something like its neighbour here, the Cyanoglossum. So because of my love of being able to dry things so that um, I've got a little bit of extra income over the winter, I grew a few new um, flowers. Um, one of them is the Xanthemum um, and that's yet to flower so I can't really tell you how I've got on with that one. And then the other one is the Holiptrum, which I've had a few problems with, but I think it might be okay because I've also had a few successful plants. Um, 
so the jury is probably still out on those and the same would go for I mean you can see here they are so they're starting to bud up um, and I, I've cut these um, these with helictrum so you can't actually see I've already got those drying and then this is the everlastings which is so like status it's very easy I should think I will grow this one again so what am I missing? What didn't I grow that I sort of wish I had to cut now? Um, didiscus. I had sown it and the slugs ate it. And I didn't think I would miss it as much as I am, but I am missing it. And the other thing that's really surprised me, because I've always thought you don't need scabious and this other thing. And that is cornflowers. I really didn't think I'd say that, but I think I think for me, cornflowers now would be far more valuable than those marigolds that are taking up that space. So that's my issue: is I'd much rather have some cornflowers in that space than the marigolds. So anyway, that's an update for you on some of the new things that I've been growing this season. Obviously, there are lots of things that you know if you watch my top 10 perennials and my top 10 cut flowers. They're things that I love and continue to love and grow. But these were just a few of the things that I wanted to try new to me this season and how I found them, how I've been getting on with them. So I just want to give you some updates on the seeds that I in the last video my biennials and perennials and also some things that I mentioned months and months ago that I was growing and I haven't you know sort of shown you how I'm getting on with them so one of them is in here in the tunnel and this is the tuberose and this is a bulb which I had heard was quite tricky so hence it still being in the greenhouse um, because I'm fussing over it quite a lot and I didn't just want to put it in the ground but anyway um, I had five and the last one doesn't look like it's sprouting when I show you but actually it is so all five are sprouting so I'll just show you what they look like so they're in this crate and you can see they've got some growth on them this is the one where the growth is not so good but there is growth here some things i like to naturally bleach in the sun and that's why i prefer to dry them in the greenhouse um, if i i mean like the greek crest i like bleach but i did dry a whole load in my shed and actually it just looks sort of dirty green so i should have done it all in here my bells of island incidentally i always do in the greenhouse now because i much prefer that bleached look Okay, so let's have a look at the seedlings we planted. Okay, so the lupins are coming on wonderfully. Look at all these fantastic lupins. So that was great. So I soaked them and that seemed to do the trick really well. And then who's this? This is my wallflowers. So they're coming on really well. I would say some of these trays might need watering tomorrow. We've got a couple of germinations in the fairy primrose, just two cells. And then at the back, um, my polar bear zinnias are doing very well. So there are a few things that I planted in the spring and they're still in pots. They haven't been planted out. One of them is the crimson loose strife, which is something I did grow before and I planted it out too early and it all died. So we've got some of that. And then I've also got some of the red valerian. So here we are. These are the crimson loose strife back here. So I'll be able to plant them out and hopefully this time I'm going to get them through. Um, and then we've got some toad flax here. I've got a feeling this is the yellow butter and eggs, but I'm not positive. And I don't think I even showed you when I sowed some eucalyptus, but I've got some teeny tiny eucalyptus here. I don't think they're going to mount to anything, but I gave it a go. Um, these are sort of the hollyhock family. 
um, I will write in what they actually are. They're a type of mallow. Um, and I've got some that I planted in the cottage garden. Um, and these ones just haven't made it anywhere. My car seedlings are getting bigger and bigger. And I still don't know what they are. I mean, are they Dorcas? Or are they, are they just a weed from the hedgerow? I mean, I just found them germinating in my car and planted them. But um, co in comments, please, take a good look. What is this? Okay, I look forward to your answers on a postcard. <laughs> um, and then these were a couple of things I trialed for the first time that I just got suckered in by the seed. So this is um, bat face capia and it's just covered in black fly. And you know what? It looked really good in the catalog, but I don't think I'd cut that. Um, so I think that was a waste of time. It may be because they never got planted out. And you know, maybe if I had have planted them out, they'd have done better. I could put them in the cottage garden. They are an annual though. Um, and they're not particularly hardy, so I don't know if it's worth it now. I'll just leave them in those pots. And then here are my valerian here. Oh, these are something, again, I was trying for the first time and never planted out. They're supposed to be a pink dandelion. They've got buds, so I'll show you those when they flower. Oh, these need to go out because I think I quite like these. These are a type of um, chrysanthemum. And then these are cuttings of um, spirea. And then these are the perennial cornflower. Um, and this is supposed to be a pink gypsophilia, I think. Um, but I tried planting that out and it looked nearly dead, so I put it into pots. And then I've got gladiolis dotted around everywhere. Um, and I'm not even sure which ones are which. <laughs> um, again, I did do a video where I bought the bulbs. This one's labelled. These look quite a good size. Oh yeah, these are the, are these are the, I'll put it on the screen, <laughs> but I think they're the ones I'm really keen to see with sort of the plummy centre. Um, and then I've got some in crates as well and more in pots. Um, yeah, the astilbe is looking lovely at the moment. I need to cut some for drying. Isn't that lovely? If you did like the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you would like to follow my cut flower and gardening journey, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to contribute towards the making of these videos, then you can, of course, buy me a coffee. And the link for coffee buying is in the description to this video. Thanks so much for coming along with me this evening. Let me know what do you love to grow? What do you hate to grow? And what things are you trialing this year? Or what things do you want to trial next year? I'd love to hear and I will see you in the next video. Ash, what have you got?